Good morning everyone. Ray from lovetherv.com. Just waking up to another cool morning here in Arizona. We're staying at an RV park in Wilcox. We booked in for a week because we knew the, the weather was going to get a little cold and we get a lot of really cool nights so we thought well we'll, we'll get some electricity here. Um, last night we had a, a hard freeze warning. We've had snow so a lot of the nights have been below freezing, some of them going down into the, the low 20s or, or you know, minus 5, 6 Celsius as far as my weather station says. And uh, the cougars perform pretty well. We're not really cold weather campers being snowbirds. We rarely see freezing or below weather. So what I did is I made sure not to, to leave any hoses hooked up. I filled the fresh water tank up fully when I got here and just disconnected all the all the water hoses because uh, didn't want them to freeze and burst. Also my sewer hose is left disconnected. The the cougar is not terribly well insulated but it does have a an underbelly to it. So it's got kind of a coroplast plastic underbelly and above that layered on top of that is a is a sheet of a uh, kind of that shiny bubble insulation just a thin layer of that and we do have uh, double pane windows which helps and uh, the biggest thing is it's the the propane uh, furnace has a vent that uh, kind of gives it like a two and a half inch um, vent that runs down into the other underbelly so as long as I uh, pump a lot of uh, propane in there. Oh, got some icicles. Down below them I'm usually okay. I made sure to take the water out of my uh, water filters there so I don't crack the cases. So just a few little preps and we were fine. We were quite cozy in there all night. What I usually do is I use the electric as long as we we're above freezing and then at night we uh, like I say pumped a lot of the filled up with propane and really pumped it through so it kept everything warm. don't see any problems. Um, also my uh, sewer valves are all inside the underneath inside the underbelly. They're not exposed at all so that really helps. Oh well, looks like we had a burst pipe over here. Or it's turned on for some reason. I don't know why it's on. Somebody left that on or something? Huh. Maybe they're flushing the pipes. I bet what happened is someone tried to use it and it was all frozen. And then they uh, didn't turn it off after off after. Well, it's warmed up just above freezing now, so I thought I'd check my valves, see if any of them are stuck or frozen. So far, I'm just dumping the galley. It looks fine. I'll test my electric valves here. I'll try the black tank. Looks fine. Open, no problem. Draining. See, close the black. Good. Yeah, let's try the gray. Yeah, no problem. So my valves are working. Didn't freeze up at all. It's a good sign. You can see, it's kind of nice on the Cougar. It's got an enclosed. Uh, water closet so the plumbing is in behind and runs through the basement there. You can also see there's a, a heating duct that runs through here. This is the one that goes from the, the furnace and up into the bedroom so it's uh, it radiates some heat as well into the into the basement uh, storage. Let me show you how we set up for a cold night. It's another cold night tonight. So our furnace uh, runs through some venting in the floor. 
you can see this back vent this is right above the fresh water tank so that helps keep keep it from freezing up um, it runs through the floor here we have another vent there I'll show you that furnace vent that goes down into the underbelly let's get some light here you can see it right there that thing goes down and it and it drops down into the underbelly where our waste tanks are helps keep all the plumbing warm there usually if it's going to be cold I'll use a vent cushion block the vent in here and we'll just show you in the bedroom how we set up usually if we're plugged in Anne has a heated throw so she plugs this in and this warms up and gets the bed all warmed up and she uses that at night she usually needs much more heat than I do so so she uses that then we have our true north little space heater there that runs on electric so we'll keep that at about 600 watts we don't want to we don't want it to be so much that the the big furnace doesn't run and then I keep the big furnace right around 65 so that it runs plenty to to, to pump a lot of heat down below you can see we're looking at zero that's zero Celsius so right now we're at right at freezing 32 Fahrenheit it's supposed to go down probably into the the low 20s or minus five minus six Celsius tonight but we'll be warm and cozy and we shouldn't get any problems with freezing plumbing or anything if it was gonna get super cold I'd probably start opening some of the cabinets so I could let uh, you know warm air go inside to the plumbing but I don't think it's gonna get that cold anyway if you want to know about super cold we're not really cold experts here just sort of showing you how we deal with in the Cougar with uh, with the cold nights but a friend of mine lives in Wyoming and he, he gave me some tips on cold weather camping and I did a post on Love Your RV so I'll link that I'll link that in the description if you want to check out real cold camping. Now if we were going to be camping off-grid without electricity, what we would do is we would run our portable propane heater, our big buddy here, um, as long as we we're you know within a few degrees of freezing or above we would run that and then at night we turn on the big heater and really blast it. Um, Anne's not going to be able to use electric well, if we have pretty good battery power, she might be able to use the electric blanket for a while. But oftentimes she'll fill up a hot water bottle, boil some water, and take that into to bed with her to keep her warm. Um, the other thing is, um, in cold weather, is condensation. Now in the desert, not much humidity is happening here. You can see outdoors is 87 right now, but we're only 46 in here. So... A lot of times we run the, the furnace in here, we have no problem with condensation. Now when we get up on the coast in the fall or spring, sometimes we can get with a problem with condensation. So what I do in that case, I wouldn't close down the vents at all. I'd, I'd leave them open a bit. Um, if we've showered or done some cooking, um, a lot of times I'll, I'll put on the, the big fan and try to suck a lot of air out first to try to make sure to get the moisture out because uh, showers and cooking put a lot of moisture into the rig so if you can get a fan and drive it out and then you know I'll leave the vents a bit cracked so during the night um, the moisture can get out otherwise it's going to con con you'll get condensation all over the walls and windows when you wake up in the morning well we survived another cold night it got down to 23 Fahrenheit last night minus 5 Celsius or so and uh, again no freeze ups or any problems we were toasty warm in there so uh, that just uh, shows what the cougar can do we haven't done very much cold weather camping like I say and I really don't want to do too much um, luckily now it's going to start warming up from here and we're going to have a above freezing temperatures and uh, it's getting into spring so hopefully this will be our last bout with it um, one thing that that's a, a good tip is um, if you're camped and it snows or anything you want to get up on your slide and check for uh, any possible ice up there because if you draw the slide in you got kind of an ice dam up there 
can cause some problems or damage so so I got the ladder checking it out also going to check the roof and make sure there's no leftover ice up there that once we're underway would come off and and cause uh, some person behind us to have a bad day anyway filling up the tanks and we're going to go head off and do some boondocking again Till next time Ray from loveyourrv.com thanks for watching cheers everyone